Hi, my name is Karen Brower, and today we're painting the fifth and last in our series of ours, the Snow Owl. Now, if you like this video, please push subscribe. It's all free. And if you're interested in seeing more of my videos, you can go to Facebook onto my page, Karen Brower Pearly Designs, where this week we'll be painting the owl ornament. All right, let's get started. First of all, I've base coated my owl in slate grey or a light grey, transferred the pattern on with black graphite paper and just base coated in his eyes and his beak. Eyes in saffron yellow with a bit of black and the beak in zinc. So the first thing that we're going to do is use an angle shader and we're going to start to float some zinc shadows onto our owl. If you're not sure on how to float, I'm using an angle shader. I put a bit of moisture. I'm just going to tip the toe in, we call it, the long part, and I'm going to blend back and forth. I like to do a messy float. So it's a good way to start to learn float, or maybe a bad way, I'm not too sure. So anyway, I'm coming floating around here. Now, if there's not enough water on there, Pick up a little bit more on your brush. Come around. The outer edge. Come down into the eye here as well. Down into the beak. Up. And I'm going to bring it all the way around here. Around the edge. Coming to bring it around the edge here. I'm coming in under here. Now I'm also going to come around the eye here. Tapping it around. Around the eye here. Tapping it around. In under this shadow bit here. You can see I'm walking it out a little bit. Actually, going to come and bring a bit of shadow around the edge of the bauble here. Tap a little bit in. Now I'm also going to come with some of this zinc around this inside edge in the eye here too. Shadow around here onto this bit as well. See, my shadow's a bit watery. Bring it around. Now you can use, we're going to deepen our shadows, and you can use either graphite or grab some zinc. Get a little bit of your black, my black I use, and I'm going to just deepen my zinc and make a darker grey. If you have graphite, you may easily put that out. Otherwise, you may just add some black to zinc and go with shade darker. If you don't have any of these colours, you can just use black and white. Black and white will make you every shade of grey. So I'm going to come in a little bit deeper in around here, around this edge in here, particularly down into this nose, beak, sorry, I say that every time, <laughs> I think by now after five weeks of doing nails I know that they're a beak and not a nose, down to here,
around and around under here. I'm also going to use some of this darker grey and I'm going to bring this shadow into my beak. Into the shadows of my beak here. I'm also going to use some of this darker grey, very watery, watery, and bring it around his eye. Going to bring some of that darker grey back into my shadow around the eye. Looking into this part in here. Now I'm going to come with a filbert, just deciding which size filbert. Maybe I'll go with a number six, number four or number six. I think I'll go with a number six. And I'm going to come into my zinc and slate grey. You can see the two colours here. This is zinc, this is slate grey. There's quite a difference in colour. You know, the transition between them is quite big. So I'm going to mix the two together and make myself a mid-value, a colour that's in between the two of them. Now I'm going to push my filbert into it, push down, holding my brush really vertical. I'm pushing down on that barrel into that paint and I'm lifting and I'm going to create a C in the brush. The brush has got this little C in it. I can even push it with my finger a little bit if I want. It's like a little C happening. And I'm going to come and I'm going to add this little, these little strokes on top of the head here. I'm going to turn the piece, I'm going to cut it back into the paint, push into it, lift up, creating that C, and I'm going to bring some under here. I just do a light tap. My brush is really vertical. It actually shows really nicely with the camera sometimes how to hold the brush, the angle of the brush, and this is definitely keeping that brush vertical. Okay, now I'm going to come into my slate grey. I'm pushing into the slate grey, lifting, and I'm going to bring these lighter seas. onto his head. Again, very vertical, turning that piece, pushing back into that slate grey, lifting up. And in here. Hopefully my hand's not in the way, I'm sorry about that. Okay, we're gonna let that dry. We're going to come into a rake brush or a brush that you like to use. Some people like to use a round. I have a scruffy old filbert that all the bristles have separated. 
a wisp, a comb, a rake, any brush will do, or a scruffy old brush. And I'm going to come into some slate grey, then I'm just going to lighten with a bit of titanium white. I'm going to make a really light grey. And I'm going to have that quite inky. I'm going to, again, push this brush down onto that ferrule, separating those bristles. See, I'll walk that paint out a little bit. I don't want a bucket lot. I don't want a heap of paint in that brush. Raking it. Look at that brush, how it's all coming apart, like all the bristles are separated. That's what we, I like. So I'm going to come and I'm going to watch my angle and I'm going to start to bring in some feathers. Coming into my shadows. You see, I'm not worrying about these brows, these ones that I'm going to bring in later. I'm putting the underlying feathers in. Pushing down. Bringing it around. I turn my work. My brush is very vertical. I don't push down very hard at all. I'm just like touching the surface. Just a soft little touch. I'm just softly bringing them in. Now I'm going to pick up some white. And I'm going to bring in some lighter feathers. Again, have it inky. Just want it to come off your brush very nicely. Soft touch. Just lightly bringing it around. Brush is vertical. Again, very important, soft touch. I'm starting with my stroke where I want it lightest, pulling into the shadow. And we're going to wait for that to dry. While I'm waiting for that to dry, I'm going to come back into my, that mix with the slate grey and the titanium white. I'm going to use my filbert again, pushing down, creating that C. And I'm going to bring in some of those lighter little strokes into his head. Okay, I'm turning my work, coming into that light mix again, push down, lift it straight up so you're creating that little suction cup. You'll see these in here. And lighten. I'll add more white to this to make even a lighter grey. And come and add some more. I'm going to add more white. 
building it up slowly, push down, lift. And lightning. Okay, I'm turning again. Push down, lift. That's a stroke. And coming in lighter again. Sorry if that was off camera. I'm going to come with my liner brush. I'm going to come into that light grey mix, zinc, or slate grey, sorry, with titanium white. A light grey. And I'm just going to come and line her in. I'm going to use nearly white so we can see it. I'm going to bring in some feathers. Watching the direction. You work when you need to. I tend to like to pull my finger, my hand towards myself. So I'm pulling that towards me. I'm bringing that. Sometimes you can, you know, have your hand in a different position. some from this way out so I'm bringing with my liner brush now some feathers in It's sort of an inky consistency, so it comes nicely off your line, the brush. I want it just to come nicely off. If it's not coming off, then you need to add a little bit more water to the paint so that we get these nice little fine strokes. Just bringing them in. See, I'm pulling some from this way too. In. Okay, so I'm going to wait for that to dry. And I'm going to come to a little round brush and I'm going to come back into zinc. And I'm going to dry brush a bit of highlight onto my beak. Looking at where I want it lightest on the tip here. And then just dry brushing it up that middle of the beak. So that we want it to look. You know, if we need to pick up some of that darker grey, we can dry brush that back in. up some slate grey and lightening that beak. Lighten up the centre. 
dry brushing that colour. If we lose our shadows, we can come and refloat. Just making his beak a little bit bigger there. A little bit wider. Funny thing is I've painted that many of these that sometimes sometimes they have smaller beaks, sometimes bigger beaks. I try not to make this owl. Now I don't know if it's because of the brows. He can tend to look angry. While we're waiting for it to dry. I'm going to come and reinforce any shadows. So I'm going to come back with my zinc and I'm going to float back any shadows. So if I think I need a little bit of shadow behind here again, I'm just going to float some back. This is if you lose your shadows more than anything else. I tend to not now because <laughs> you paint that many of them that yeah but it does help if you do lose your shadows that you know you can always come back and tap shadows back especially around his eyes you know, if i want to bring a bit of shadow back around here i can if i need to bring some shadow back Around his eye, I can. And if I've lost that shadow there, see, I can bring it back. I've lost shadow here. I can bring it back. If I've lost a shadow in that beak, I can. This is using slate grey. And we're just lightly bringing back any shadows if we need to. You can also deepen that shadow. Remember, deepen the zinc with a touch of black. Or if you have graphite, you may use graphite. We're just making a darker grey. And I'm probably going to come around this eye with that darker grey. Come around with that dark grey. Into the eye. Just watching it. Where I might want it a bit deeper. Okay. If I need to come under that beak with a bit of darker shadow, I can. Colour back into that beak, up into that centre. Just using slate grey at the moment. Dry brushing it in. Just blending it in. Again, don't lose your shadows. I'm going to wait for this all to dry now. <coughs> Excuse me. And <coughs> I'm going to come back with saffron yellow. So saffron yellow is what I base coated the eyes in. And I'm going to <clears throat> bring that saffron yellow back into his eyes. And if you do that, <clears throat> saffron yellow back into his eyes. This is where you can come and play with those eyes and look and think, okay, what else do I need to add? Do I need to change the shape? Just putting out some bittersweet chocolate 
and I'll pop in out a little bit of milk chocolate as well. This because I did forget to put them out. And we're just going to wait for our saffron yellow to dry a little bit. I'm going to mix a little bit. I've got 24 karat gold out. I'm going to mix a little bit of bittersweet chocolate to the 24 karat gold. And I'm just going to float some shadows onto the gold part of my bauble up here. Now, if your saffron yellow is dry, you're going to pick up a bit of milk chocolate and we're going to bring some shadows onto the top part of the eye. All right, I'm bringing some shadow onto this top part of his eye with milk chocolate. Okay, we're going to let that dry. Needs to be a bit deeper. And so I'm waiting, I'm working on areas while everything's drying. Now I'm going to pick up some black. Now I'm not doing my black super watery. I'm picking up a side load. And I'm going to come and have that brush on an angle and bring in this black shadow line. On the chisel of the brush, I'm bringing it around. Bringing it around up this top bit. Into the nose here. Pick up that bit of black, do it around this side as well. Down into the middle, bringing it around. Turn that. Bringing it around. This is where you can also look at your eye and think, do I need to bring some extra watery shadow in here? Or in here. In what I call the triangles of colour of shadow, you know, where the shadow is the deepest. It's going to be the deepest in this corner here. And it's going to be the deepest in this corner here. So they're the little triangles of shadow. Okay, if we need to come and bring some under this beak, up in the middle of this beak, we can come and lay it. I'm going to come with my liner brush. I'm just going to use a small little liner at the moment and look at the difference in these two eyes. And this is totally up to you. You can keep your pupils small or you can make your pupils a bit bigger. And I've got my pupils bigger in this one here, the painted one already. So I'm going to come and just make my pupils in this little, in the one I'm painting now, a little bit bigger because I'm worried that if the pupils are too small, I could give him beady little eyes. It could make his eyes look a little bit beadier. So I'm just making them a little bit bigger. So I'm just making his, so on this one, I did do them a little bit small. So I'm just making them a little bit bigger. And again, this is up to you on the shape eye that you would like. So 
making sure I'm getting those pupils similar in size. Making sure I'm getting them similar in size. This one just needs to be a little bit rounder. Here. Okay. I'm going to just come with a little bit of milk chocolate. I'm just going to bring some milk chocolate here. Soften that circle. I'm going to come when I highlight and highlight this one down here and fix here. All right, I'm going to come with some watery black. And I'm going to lightly come and outline his eye in black. And lightly outline that eye in black. Bring that shape around. All right, I'm going to lightly outline his eye in black. Again, sorry if my hand's in the way. Often when I'm like when I'm doing my detail work, I'll hold my piece a little bit closer to me than painting it down with the camera. I'll sort of hold it up and get a better look. <laughs> Especially as you get older and your eyes aren't as good. Again, if I get some colour here, I'm just going to get rid of that. Use your finger, I can smudge it in. Bringing it around. Getting those eyes into shape. If I look and I think I need a bit more saffron yellow here. I'm just bringing some saffron yellow back to help my shape so that I'm happy with these eyes. And I always say the bigger the eye, sometimes the younger the owl can look to. You know, a baby owl will have much bigger eyes. Well, all owls have big eyes. But when they're littler, like a little baby shape size, their eyes can be just huge. We'll make them look younger. Even though, yes, we know ours have big eyes. Okay. So I'm going to let those eyes dry a little bit more. And I'm going to come back with my filbert and I'm going to push down and I'm doing a grey that almost look almost looks white. And I'm tapping that onto his head. Push down, load up. This is your snow owl too. They are quite white. But we like to see the layers. You know, what I'm probably suggesting is don't make it pure white. You know, we want to see each of those lovely values, all this work I've been making you do, show through. You know, we haven't just come in and base coated it white and left it white. We're sort of doing this nice layering. I'm going to get rid of that colour there where I don't want that light all the way up. I'm 
to use my liner now with this really light gray, nearly white, shade off white sort of thing. And again, I'm going to bring in these feathers. The outside, you're going to lightly bring into those shadows. If you lose your shadows again, just re-float them back in with some sink. You know, if you do go a little bit heavy-handed. Just wash shadow back in. Starting before we go to pure white, we're just doing this light gray. It's like white, looks like white, but it's just got a tint to color into it. Loose little feathers. Again, watching the direction. If you do lose your black, we can wiggle that back in too. It's layering a colour. Have a nice liner, have that liner vertical. And I just use the tip and like flick that colour. I just flick that brush in. I'm just using the tip. I don't push hard, I don't lay the whole brush down. I just use the tip of the brush and bring it in. Layering those strokes around. And I always suggest or say this is your snow owl you know how light you want it to be is really up to you this is where i like individualness you know you it becomes your little owl okay, while i wait for that to dry now if i do look and i can see now that i just need to probably bring some fine little Feathers, strokes just into his eye here, just softening some of that shadow. I'm going to come with my round again and I'm going to use that really light mix and I'm going to dry brush. Outlining the edge a little bit of this beak. And then I'm just going to dry brush. Highlight back into the shadow. Notice I'm taking that excess off so that I've got nothing really on that paintbrush and I'm just moving that colour up into the shadows. Okay. Now... I'm going to come with a little bit of that bit of sweet chocolate or you could use black and I'm just going to deepen some of the eye here right up top. Still leaving some of that colour to show through. I'm going to come now with my liner brush in some thick white. And I'm going to drizzle, hit, tap, 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 hit, miss, hit, miss, white along the edge of that black. Just 
don't do a nice straight line. It'll look so much nicer wiggled. Down under here, it's not all the way to the beak. It's sort of got a fine little line. Then getting thicker as he comes around to the side here. Lay it on that edge. Getting this tap, 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 tap. It looks so much nicer than a straight line. You definitely don't want that straight line. Wiggle, wiggle, tap, 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 tap. Lift, lift, push, lift, push, lift, push, lift. Again, it's just lightly coming around, not all the way to the beak. Now, if you've lost any of your black, you can always come back now with a bit of black and tap any back. If you've lost any of it, you can just bring some back. You can also come back with a bit more white. Is that you might want to hit it a bit more. Tap, 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 tap. Thicker bits. Wiggle, wiggle, hitting this. Now, I'm going to come with some of that white and I'm going to highlight my beak. particularly bringing it up into the center of the beak. Brush that in. I'm going to use my filbert again. And this time I'm coming into pure white. Now we're just using pure white. I'm going to push and lift, creating our C. And we're going to come with pure white. And lighten. Him or her. Bringing it around. All right, and then I'm going to turn it and lighten. On sort of the underneath the beak area. In the eye here. Just tap it in. Brush is vertical. Saw taps. Sorry if I continually repeat myself. All right. Then we are coming with liner again, and I'm coming into pure white. And I'm going to lighten, have it inky. Remember, we want it flowing off that brush, coming off that brush really nicely. And put those white feathers in. You get a hit line, don't be frightened to blend it back with your finger. 
My mum always said I was really good at finger painting. <laughs> okay. So I'm putting in that. Whoa. Now that's a bit heavy. So I am going to come back and sink that back. Light touch. That one I just pushed down a little bit hard. I don't mind some brighter white ones come in and, you know, adding variety, but we just don't want a distinct hard line there. See, I don't mind some of these ones that I call a highlight one coming in. And then I'm going to come and add some feathers coming out this way. Sorry, I'm doing this in a bit of a hurry. I shouldn't brush, should I? Oh, nice. Depends on how high you want to go into that shadow. You can see I need to go a little bit more into some of the shadow areas with some light little strokes. Again, I'm going to pull strokes from out here. Now, when I'm doing that, you can see I'm concentrating on this front part here. So it's a really nice inky colour coming in. Okay, now. I do want this shadow area to have shadow and these back little bit. I'm going to throw some little feathers unevenly, you know, just coming over that little nose there a little bit. And just here. Just run some loose little ones in. Now I'm going to add some watery ones to the top here. But don't make this area too bright because we really want our ones to show when we start to add our little brows in. So I'm going to put some in here, definitely where we want it a bit lighter, but don't go as light. You know, we might go lighter down here, still even more, but I just, we don't want up here being too light. Oh, sorry, I'm talking and not even watching what I'm doing. Because we're going to be bringing in our brows. So I come from like the top of the eye here and we're sort of coming down into this area here. So I'm going to bring my first stroke like in here too. Bring this one in. And then I'm going to bring some strokes around. This is your snow owl. So it depends on how distinct you want your brows to be is what I would say. And watch where they're coming from. I do want to cover a bit of this eye here. Just going to bring, there you go, just maneuver that one in. 
Okay, so now I'm going to do the one on this eye. And again, I'm starting from about here. I'm going to bring that brow down. So I like that loose little one. I'm just going to add a little one here that I like that. Sort of softens that a little bit in there. Yeah. Bringing it down. And then bringing this one over as well. And then bringing in the feathers. Up and around. Come with stronger white if you need to. Sorry, I'm just turning. Watching where my little ones are coming from. Looking at if I want thicker ones. I have that paint a little bit thicker. So I can really distinctly bring them forward if that's what I would like. Again, this is yours. Just come a little bit too much there. Sorry. Okay, so we'll bring in some nice little highlights into there for our little brows. Again, if you need more, I actually that's pretty good. I'm just going to touch up my bit of black a little bit in here. You can see a little bit of yellow coming through. Now, I'm going to come with saffron yellow and 24 karat gold. I'm going to mix the two together and I'm going to bring some highlight into his eye. Now this is where also you can even if you want to bring silver into the shadows. You could add silver, white the silver to the white and bring silver into the I'm just going to pick up more 24 karat gold into the white areas as well if you really wanted to sparkle him up and you know, make him a real Christmas owl. But if we want to keep him realistic, I did bring the gold in. Then I'm going to add a bit of white to it. And I'm going to lighten here. And I'm going to lighten here. I'm going to let it dry too. I'm going to come with my filbert and I'm coming into black this time. I'm pushing down, lifting, creating my C stroke. And I'm going to add black. strokes. On top of his head. Just around and I'm going to come underneath. Push, lift. Make sure you're pushing it into paint and lifting it up. So creating that C stroke. Pop those little C strokes in. And I look and I can 
probably add more white. There was here. This is where you can play and play. In all honesty, you can just keep layering until you are happy. Sometimes it's good not to overwork an area. You know, when you're happy with it, stop. That's my best advice um, because often then you can think, oh, I'll just do that one more stroke, and then you think, why did I do that extra stroke? I should have left it. I should have left it. So I always say if you're happy with it, leave it. Don't keep fiddling and unplaying. Sometimes I take a photo of the piece and I look at it through the camera. Now, don't forget this is acrylic as well. So when you varnish it, it's going to come up a lot brighter. If it's fully dry, you can get a little bit of water and put some water over it. And the water, the glisten then will show you what it will be like when it's varnished. I'm just lightening the beak a little bit. Just going to come here now. I'm just going to bring a bit more white into the shine. This is the reflective shine of the highlight. This is the reflective shine of the highlight in the eye. This is the glistening that's in the jelly part. Now I'm going to moisten my eye with a little bit of water. And you can see I'm doing it where the pupil and the iris meet. Don't just a little bit there. I'm going to pick up a little bit of white. And I'm going to put it where the pupil and the iris meet. And that water is going to help blur that out as well. Okay, again, I'm going to moisten where the pupil and the iris meet, at probably about 2 o'clock on this eye, maybe 10 o'clock on, on your left eye. And I'm going to tap in. And that moisture too, that water that, that we put down is going to help uneven those little edges. I need to lighten the beak. We need to add more white. Continually play. I'm going to get my round and I'm going to come into my gold and I'm going to lighten the top of my bauble. You can use any gold you like. You can add glitter, you can add diamantes. I'm going to add a bit of white. Now that's a little bit strong. Kick it back. And I'm going to add some white onto the bauble. You can wait to dry this. Okay. Now we can add more white. I could add more white around it until I'm actually, I think, okay, that's enough white. I'm just going to look at that eye. I'm not really happy with that saffron yellow. I'm just going to bring a bit of saffron yellow with a touch of gold in it. Just down, this is where even watching it on the screen or seeing it. You can come and look at a shape and think, okay, I'm not really happy with that shape. There we go. That's a better eye. That's curved that eye out a little, maybe just even a little bit more. Sorry, I took a great wallop of water there. See, these are all lessons in don't rush. I do like the teacher. That's better. Okay, and then just varnish with your favourite varnish. Sometimes the ornaments, I love to use my triple thick for a really thick, glossy look or for a softer, the so soft varnish is lovely. There even is, if you want sparkle, there is a starlight varnish that's got like glitter, a glittering varnish. You can paint the backs. Well, there you go. That's just 
have something painted over it or um, you can paint them to look like the back of him. Choice is up to you. If I was going to paint the back of him, I would make the back of him look like this. So all of the stuff that you did on the top of the head, I would just cover and do the back if you wanted the back of your bauble to be like that. Thank you so much for joining me. I look forward to seeing you again. Remember, if you like this video, to please push subscribe. It's all free. Thank you so much. Take care and stay safe, everyone. Bye.